In one year the Miami Dolphins have gone from worst to first in the NFL in points allowed, which is a big reason their playoff hopes are on the rise. So why is cornerback Xavier Howard the Dolphins' only Pro Bowl player? Miami always gets overlooked, Howard said. If some of the guys were on a different team, they'd get recognized. As a team, we can pick that off with a Super Bowl, and everybody will be happy. The Super Bowl is heady talk coming from a franchise that hasn't won a playoff game in 20 years, and the Dolphins are probably still not ready for primetime players, in February at least. But their improvement under second-year coach Brian Flores has been dramatic, especially on defense. Last season the Dolphins gave up a franchise record 494 points, 30.9 per game and the most in the NFL, and went 5-11. This season they're allowing 18.4 per game the league's lowest average, and are contending for an AFC wild card berth at 9-5. Because defense is often the best way to win on the road, especially in December, the Dolphins' final two games, at Las Vegas and at Buffalo, don't seem quite so daunting. They probably must win both to reach the postseason for only the third time since 2001. Flores' defense is a blitz-loving, ball-hawking bunch that leads the league in takeaways 26 and third-down conversions 33% but ranks near the bottom in star power. That was confirmed by this week's Pro Bowl picks, when Miami's lone selection was Howard, who leads the league with nine interceptions, more than nine teams. He's just a guy that you can count on consistently week in and week out, Miami defensive coordinator Josh Boyer said. He's really a complete player. But as with any good defense, the Dolphins' success is a collective effort that includes five new starters this year, four free agent acquisitions and second-round draft pick Raekwon Davis. We wanted to add the right people, guys who are tough and smart and competitive, Flores said. With every addition, we have that in mind. Safety Bobby McCain has been with the Dolphins since 2015, which gives him seniority on the defense and a unique perspective on this year's transformation. We've got 11 guys who want to do their job well and play for each other, McCain said. That's one of the biggest things, understanding that we're a family, not just a football team. We have a lot of guys who are being selfless, just doing what they're supposed to do and having fun doing it. McCain is part of a secondary that has allowed only 16 touchdown passes, second fewest in the NFL, after getting torched for a league-high 39 in 2019 have increased to 37 from a league low 23 last year. And the Dolphins' streak of at least one takeaway in 20 consecutive games is the NFL's longest. It's just playing hard, just all effort, the 330-pound Davis said. It's not a secret, not a scheme, not a play. It's just chasing the ball down, getting to the ball and getting the ball. Davis's teammates echo that attitude, a reflection of a unit that may be low on big names but is also low on ego. We've had a number of interceptions this year where there has been good pressure, and there have been a number of sacks where there has been good coverage, Boyer said. It all kind of goes hand in hand. We've got a good group of guys who play for each other and are all genuinely happy when somebody else has success. The disruptive nature of the defense diminishes the significance of some statistics. The Dolphins rank in the bottom half of the league in yards allowed rushing, passing and overall. They've been outgained by, 400, outgained by 426 yards, but are tied for the fifth best point differential. Which players best defines a revolution? We'll take a look at the less popular names in the Miami Dolphins. Devontae Parker, after never playing a full season in his first four NFL seasons, Parker now has a run of 20 consecutive games and he basically said Monday he's learning that having to play with injuries comes with the territory. I would say I was just younger back then and I wasn't used to injuries like that all of the time, Parker said. It was something new for me, but now as you get older, you realize that it's just something that you can play through. Parker said before the start of the 2019 game and again before the start of this year that his goal had nothing to do with receiving numbers but rather being able to play 16 games. So maybe that played a role in his ability to come back for the Buffalo game in week two after he had to leave the season opener at New England because of a hamstring injury. And it definitely was on his mind after he left the game against A. Ah, it was actually because I don't have time to be missing out on games and little stuff like that. Little tweaks and stuff like that, Parker said. I just feel like I have a need, I've got to come back in. 
There's no downplaying the significance of having Parker in the lineup for the Dolphins, who simply aren't as dangerous offensively without their clear-cut number one receiver. Through the first quarter of the 2020 season, Parker ranks in the top five in the AFC in both receptions 24 and receiving yards 279. Devontae is a great player for us, one that I'm always going to rely on especially in tough situations, quarterback Ryan Fitzpatrick said. And try to get him the ball and rely on him to win one-on-one. -on -one. He did some good things versus zone coverage, just finding the spot and running after the catch. But he's a big part of what we do. And it was good to get him back in all game. Parker always had the ability, that was obvious from the time he arrived as the 14th overall pick in the 20 arrived as the 14th overall pick in the 2015 NFL draft out of Louisville. Now that he's gotten the availability part of the equation in place, he continues to fulfill his potential. Eric Rowe. Safety Eric Rowe has checked just about every box that you possibly can in the secondary. When Rowe arrived on campus with the University of Utah as a freshman, he arrived as a three-star recruit but quickly claimed a starting role in the secondary, playing three years as the Utes' free safety before transitioning to cornerback for his senior season. Rowe's play was promising enough that the Philadelphia Eagles would go on to use a top 50 pick to draft Rowe, hoping he could help bring stability to their cornerback room, only to trade him to New England after one season. While with the Patriots, Rowe was tasked with the prospect of both playing on the perimeter and stepping into the slot to play inside. Durability issues were his primary sticking point in New England, however, and when his contract expired, Rowe chose to come south and sign with the, sign with the Dolphins. Midway through the year, defensive coach Josh Boyer suggested Rowe make another transition, back to safety. From there, Rowe's play blossomed and he became a reliable fixture throughout the second half of the year, staying sticky on opposing tight ends and shining in coverage. Long story short, Rowe has literally seen everything there is to see in the secondary now, he's played outside corner, slot corner, free safety and now strong safety. But his mental dexterity through it all is what has him now built to be a positive contributor as the primary coverage option against tight ends. Entering into the 2020 offseason, Rowe had clear objectives in mind with his role, continue to get better in his coverage techniques and see his run fits better this season. But that, like everything for Rowe to this point in his career, has been a journey, he's had to specialize on different areas of emphasis at different times. For the majority of his offseason, his focus didn't change, he's still a coverage guy first in this defense. It's tough to train run fits in the offseason. I can't ask like, four and five guys, hey, you pull, you block down, you do this, you do that. So my offseason training was working on my man technique, press, because I know that's like 90% of our defense playing man, Rowe said. I just kept with the same offseason training, just working on my feet, working on my hands, working on my root technique and then I know it's usually supposed to be OTAs, but now this year it's training camp, working on a lot of run fits, kind of seeing the run quicker, working with all that. With Miami now in camp, the time is now to collect his reps in his new challenge, mastering the box. It's still very new, especially since his role at Utah didn't offer him as much preparation for it as you might think. Even though I did play safety in college, I was mainly a free safety so I was in the post a lot. I didn't really have to deal with run fits and all that, so when I made that transition, that was probably the most difficult thing, was knowing that I actually have a gap that I need to fit and it's not like a corner has like the D gap or the most outside gap. That's easy, said Rowe. Like there's some plays I actually have to read O-linemen, watch the pull, that happens fast, and at the same time, focus on my tight end in case it's a pass play. So that's probably the most difficult thing for me, was trying to pick up on the run game, try to understand fronts because now I've got to understand what front is our D-end in or the D-line in. Rowe is used to getting tested, his ability to shine was stunted in New England due to injuries popping up throughout the course of his three seasons there. But Rowe's time with the Patriots forged his relationship with Brian Flores, who he now plays for once again here in Miami. And if there's one thing Flores knows about his strong safety, he's going to stay with it and get it right. Whether that's run fits or anything else thrown his way. It's all he's ever done, stick with it.